she was just 24 years old, Susanna Cahalan was finally diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disorder called anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis. After going one full month, look, you can see the picture of her in the hospital having a hallucination right there. Uh, one full month having no idea what was causing her, what was causing her brain to, quote, light on fire. That illness was caught by neurologist Dr. Suhel Najjar. Susanna's written a book about her experience called Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness. And it's now a Netflix film, which is out at this moment. And that book has literally saved lives, which we're going to get to in one second. But I've got to ask you, um, how is this treated? Doctor, doctor, how did you treat this illness? With uh, a, a variety of immune therapies to include the intravenous immunoglobulin, which derived from thousands of healthy individuals. It's a good antibody to counteract the harmful antibody that was circulating in Susanna's blood. How long did it take? Uh, it took really a few months. I will say, I will argue, close to a year or two years before Susanna really totally back to normal. And that's the question. Are you? I would say yes, yeah. <laughs> normal as I can be. You feel good. And you're, you're good. an active journalist now. So. Yes, I am, yes. I am, yeah. You We're... look and sound amazing. I, it's like the story. <laughs> but it doesn't end there. The, the story does not end there. Uh, because all of this happened, right? And then Susanna, like a good journalist, wrote about it. And then one day, Dr. Paul Chow was sitting at home worried about his 18-year-old daughter, Eileen, whose health had turned from a headache to a coma in a matter of weeks. Looking for clues, he stumbled upon Susanna's book and placed a call to Dr. Najjar. And not long after that fateful call, Eileen, too, was diagnosed with the same disorder. Eileen Chow and her father, Dr. Paul Chow, are here with us now. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So, from a headache to a coma in weeks? Well, it, everything started in uh, April 2016. She complained of some headache, insomnia, uh, fatigue. She went to see a doctor, and she, they told her she, had, she was stressed and she had the virus. She came home about a month later, and things start moving very fast. She became confused. She was disoriented. She had hallucinations. And uh, she had very strange symptoms. I call them the broken, broken robot syndrome. Uh, one symptom is that she will have multitask autoplay. So what I, what I can explain is she will get up, go to the desk, say, uh, say something like, I have to study for the LSAT, and then immediately get up and go to the couch, and then suddenly and go to, he says, I, I, she says, I have to go to the car. And uh, that gets repeated over and over and over, like a robot. And you, meantime, and, are a doctor, right? right. What, what kind of doctor I'm are you? Internal medicine doctor. Internal medicine. So, so right. you, you know was, this is not normal, but you don't I know what it is. I was witnessing the disease. I was the witness of the disease. So I can describe and understand the symptoms a little bit better. Um, the, second, the second symptom she had was she started speaking a foreign language, a tongue. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit like a computer language, a, a, a broken records that they can play backwards. I thought she was possessed. Uh, and possessed. Possessed, yeah. Wow. Um, then st things start moving very fast. Uh, we, we took her out to see a show. She collapsed a couple of times and at twitching of the mouth and looking backwards, it was a type of seizure called, called pretty mouth seizures. So we took her to the emergency room. They run some tests. They, uh, they ask us over and over, is she on drug? It sounds like an overdose. The same happened with Susanna. Uh, they thought she had a drug problem. Uh, all the tests came back normal. CAT scan. Uh, then uh, they admitted her for depression, little schizophrenia. She had mania and uh, maybe a little psychosis. Mm -hmm. So she was put this, on I mean, this just mirrors Susanna's story exactly, in, including right down to the MRI being totally normal. They did all these MRIs. It was totally normal. They're, they're looking at her, at her family, like, you're, you know, she's, she's crazy and you're just not willing to accept it. And meanwhile, you're a doctor saying it's, it's not, this is not about losing her mind. This is something physical. So Susanna's situation happened in 2009. She wrote her book in 2012. This is happening to you, Eileen, in 2016. Um, and she, Eileen goes into a coma for six weeks. So what happened next? 
That's where we're picking now, it up. Let's go nope, back stand by. Back. That's after the break. <laughs> We're back now with Eileen Chow and her father, Dr. Paul Chow, who was critical in helping to get a proper diagnosis for Eileen after she was in a coma for six weeks with symptoms of psychosis. They put her through electroshock therapy. They uh, once again thought it was in her head. You asked them to do a spinal tap to, to consider this diagnosis that you had read about in doing your research in, in Susanna's case. You found that they had not done the test. You're at the point where you're preparing your wife for the worst. Right. At uh, week five, uh, I can see my daughter is going downhill. She had an uh, episode of complete heart block. Uh, from, from my understanding, complete heart block is the stage before cardiac arrest. She had respiratory arrest. She had lost 40 pounds. She's developing sacral ulcer. And I, I came home and I told my wife... Uh, you know, I think this is the end. And my wife got on internet and found Susanna's book, found Dr. Najjar, and I called Dr. Najjar. His first word is, I know what you're going through. I'll be there tomorrow. And how soon was Eileen properly diagnosed? Dr. Dr. Najjar came, obviously she could, uh, my daughter couldn't draw the clock, so he did some exams. She had a positive fetal uh, reflexes. And what he said was, uh, this is a case, this is, a, this is not a psychiatric case, it's a neurological case. We need to change the treatment, start her on therapy. There's no, no time to wait for test results. She was started on Wednesday afternoon. Thursday morning, I come to the hospital. The nurse is running towards me, smiling. And, and she told me that, you don't believe what happened. Your daughter opened her eyes. So I walk into the room, and my daughter was there, opening her eyes, smiling. And uh... Eileen, I, I know you don't remember this for obvious reasons, um, but at, when you came out of it, how long was your recovery? Um, my recovery period was about nine months. Uh, I had to take a semester off from school, obviously. And now you're going, but because you, you, your dad talked about you taking the LSAT. You did, you did ultimately take the LSAT. It, I did. Before you go to law school. And what are your plans now? Um, I'm going to Albany Law School in the fall. Yay! Yay! That's amazing. I, you know, even though you two had such great outcomes after everything you, you went through, the truth is... Women who came before you, and they say this typically uh, strikes women of childbearing age, although it can strike anybody, would have been deemed witches. Even you said you as an MD thought she was right. possessed. Right. Um, and so you can never know, right? We, we will never know how many people were misdiagnosed as what, witches, lunatics, what have you, and their lives written off before we had doctors like you, Dr. Najjar. All the best to you. All the best to you at Albany Law School. Let me know if I can help you in any way. You're not going to need my help. But I got, I got some people there. I know some people. Okay. Much you. love to you guys. And uh, don't forget, the book is called Brain on Fire. It's on Netflix. And our gratitude to you. All the best.